Hello everyone, this is Brian from Pakunsa. In this video, I am going to explain the development workflow of Adaptive Autosa on the basis of R1911 version. The main purpose of Autosa Adaptive Platform is to standardize Adaptive Application Development. Adaptive Autosa standard doesn't include OS and device driver while classic Autosa standardized OS and device driver such as MCAL. In Adaptive Platform, the application consists of library and executables on the POSIX OS. The Adaptive applications run on the ECU along with ARXML and manifest files. There are two specifications that developers must read for Adaptive Application de Development. The first one is Autosa EXP Platform Design. It includes the basic concepts of Adaptive Platform, implementation of Adaptive Application, and its mechanism. The second one is Autosa TPS manifest specification. It includes specific introduction of ARXML designing, which has more than 800 pages. So it is a hard work for a common developer to understand all of them. In this video, I will introduce the most fundamental parts of Adaptive Platform development workflow. There are four essential developing parts in Adaptive Platform, which respectively correspond to four chapters of TPS specification. They are Chapter 3, Application Design, Chapter 7, Machine Manifest, Chapter 8, Execution Manifest, and Chapter 10, Service Instance Manifest. For Adaptive Platform, these four parts have to be designed in ARXML files. Please look at the diagram of Autosa EXP platform design on the left side. Developer needs to edit ARXML file to define how to design applications through application design and machine manifest design. After that, Developer needs to define how the application runs in the ECU through execution manifest and service instance manifest. After designing all four parts of both, developer can get the ARXML files. And developer then needs to input the ARXML files to manifest files generator. And finally, after the generation, three kinds of manifest files, which are machine manifest, execution manifest, service instance manifest, will be loaded into ECU. As I mentioned before, Adaptive Platform doesn't standardize OS, but the only regulation is to use POSIX OS only, such as Linux. So here, we prepared four videos, which are Application Design, Machine Manifest, Execution Manifest, Service Instance Manifest. I will show the actual designing process through Autosa I.O., Pakonsa's ARSM Modeling Tool. The first video is about Application Design, which is described in Chapter 3 in TPS Specification. For application design, developer needs to design these five parts. The first part to design is STD CPP implementation data type because data types of adaptive applications must be designed in C++. We can find that Autosa provides adaptive platform data type in the specification. Developer needs to create C++ data types 
according to the standard. We can also find that Autosub provides sample error smell file. After designing the data type, the next is service interface, then adaptive application software component type and port. And next is executable, which refers to the actual executable name of application in the ECU. Speaking of process design, there are still few related definitions to support it in the R1911 TPS specification, so I will pass it. The screen you see is the interface of Autosa IO, the ARXML modeling tool provided by Pakonsa. The Autosa version is R1911. Here I will create sample according to TPS specification chapter 3. In application design, we need to define executable file of adaptive application and the ARA API the application is going to use. Here I'll create sample of ARACOM API which handles event through some IP. First get into file, new, then click AutoZap project to create a new one. After creating the new project, we need to create a new ARXML. In this sample, I will name it Application Design. We need an AR package, so I create one with the name Application Design. So far, I created an ARXML file. It is an XML format file, and the highest tag is AUTOSA. You can find AUTOSA schema here. The number 00048 means the ARXML file is R1911. In case of R2011 version, the number will be 00049. After creating the ARXML file, the first step we need to do is to set up data type. You can do it in Autosa Data Type Designer. Right click the project, then open Autosa Data Type Designer. Regarding the C++ data types, user can establish them in CPP implementation data type. A little tip is that there is an Autosa document called Adaptive Platform Type, and it shows basic C++ data types. Developer can establish the data types or copy and paste the sample ARXML. In this video, I'll copy and paste the Autosa sample ARXML. Here I import Autosa mode standard type ARXML file. After that, press F5 to refresh. Then you can find the basic data types are loaded here. They are the ones from Adaptive Platform Type document. On basis of them, I will create data types for service interface. Service interface is a necessary part for service oriented communication. When creating service inter instance interface, developer need to refer to C++ data type. So here, let me create byte array data type in form of vector. Right clicking the table, you can add data types. I will add AR package under the application design with the name C++ data type. Speaking of the AR package, you can find them in the tree on the left side of the tool.
Here I type in byte array in the data type name field. And I choose vector in the category. In this case, the header file implementation type byte array will be created through Aracom generator. Next, I need to choose reference of the C++ data that byte array will use. So I add argument and choose unit 8 in template argument. Next, I'll get to the second part, service interface. In service interface, developer need to design port interface for communication, which use ARA API. According to Adaptive Platform Standard, it is necessary to use ARA API for communication between applications. So I need to design port interface to use ARA API. Right-click the project and open Adaptive Service Designer. Here I add service interface. And the same, I add AR package, name it service interface. And here, I change the name of service interface to CM Service 1. In service interface, namespace is the essential field to fill in. The namespace here means the namespace in C++. In case of language C, if they are repeated name of files or functions, they cannot be compiled. However, in case of C++, even if the names of files or functions are repeated, they still can be compiled if the namespaces are different. And since Adaptive Platform utilizes a lot of open sources, developer must fill in proper namespace. In the namespace, we usually use column in the middle. Next, I will add a new event. Here, I refer to byte array that I created. And so, so far, I finished designing event of service interface. Later, I can get auto-generated event API through Aracom generator. The third part is to create Adaptive Application Software Component Type for a Service Interface. Right-click the project and run Adaptive Application Designer. In Software Component, add Adaptive Application Software Component Type. And of course, I here create an AR package. and I change the name into Sample Application. When you create an executable in Adaptive Application for the ECU, a port is necessary to use Aracom API. Right-click the Sample Application in the table to add a port. It will be P port for sending events, otherwise R port for receiving events. So here I choose P port 
then put the service interface I created. Next is the last part, which is executable. This part will also be done through Auditive Application Designer. Here I add executable and add the IR package. Please pay attention when creating executable. The name here will be the same one which will run on POSIX OS of the Auditive platform. So please be aware that this part is case sensitive. In the category, you can choose application level or platform level. In case of platform level, it usually means the manager applications in OEM requirement, like EM, Execution Manager, PHM, uh, Platform Health Manager, CM, Communication Manager, UCM, Update and Configuration Manager, and so on. Otherwise, the other applications are usually categorized as application level. Generally, the platform level will be developed by Tier 1 or OEM and application level will be developed by third party. For this sample application, I choose application level. One more thing requiring attention is the version. If the application is planned to be updated through OTA, the easy executable needs version information. According to Odosa R1911, the serial number consists of four digits, which are major, minor, patch, and release in order. Next step is to set up root software component prototype. User can right-click the table to edit. If the executable only refers to one additive application software component type, developer can directly choose the one needed. In this sample, one single executable refers to one additive application software component type. However, in case of mass production, it might require to refer to two or more additive application software component types in one executable. In this case, developer needs to create a composition software component type for reference. So, so far the last part executable is finished and I finally finished designing the essential parts for adaptive application designing according to TPS specification chapter 3. Thanks for watching our video. Thank you.